Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Tech Check and moving the Tech Check train forward. Another special session today. Got a really cool guest with us. Kind of started the revolution in Pakistan with Naseeb Networks and is now moving on to 2.0. I'd like to welcome Monas Rahman. Hi, Monas. How are you today? Hi, how are you? Doing really well. Thanks for joining us. I know you're a busy guy, so let's dive right in in Tech Check format. So tell Thanks us a little more you. about you, Monas. What's going on these days? Oh, you know, I think, I think the world has changed post-COVID. And I know it's changed everywhere uh, else in the world. It's also changed a lot in Pakistan. And during lockdown uh, here in Pakistan, we saw the economy come to essentially a halt. I know because I run a jobs platform and our jobs dropped to about 25% from uh, March to April once lockdown started. Wow. And, uh, but the good news is now they're back at about 110% of what we saw in March, but the last uh, six months were brutal on the economy, they're brutal on businesses. So we had to reinvent a couple of things and we have landed a lot stronger than we were when we went into it. Of course, the job market's back, so our classical job business is roaring again and probably a little bit more so because more people are starting to use online post COVID. So we're seeing a spike, which is you know, uh, unfortunately a good thing as a result of a horrible six months. But what we also did during COVID was we actually dispersed cash to the uh, very poor wage workers who earn every day and they eat and then they uh, earn and they eat and they earn. During the lockdown, they had no money and they were right. starving. So we set up a crowdsourcing platform, which many of our friends in the US donated to. Uh, and uh, they gave money on one side. On the other side, we had our field agents in the Abadis and where these people live. And we right. onboarded 14,000 households and we graded them in terms of need, you know, their income and how many family members own and rent. And the money came in from one side online. We did the field surveys through this app on the other line, got 14,000 people. They weren't our people. We had people from within the communities do it. All happened in four months. So we got about 60,000 individuals on this platform across 14,000 households. Then we used um, the rails that we've developed on the payment side on a fintech side and our server shot money directly to ID cards, which they collected from Easy Pesa agents instantly. So we managed to get a thousand rupees in the hands of 60,000 people uh, after doing all of the verification on it. Then what we did is now we've given them money, we need to get them into jobs. So we've built a blue collar jobs platform on the back of the data to help them get into jobs. And that's called rosegar.pk, R-O-Z-G-A-R.pk. So we actually invented a category in the process. That happened on one side, on the other side, during lockdown, um, I was uh, at home, but I used to go into a market here to see how all these small little stores are doing, the grocery stores, the Kriana stores, as we call them. Right. And I discovered they all wanted to sell online, but they didn't have a sophistication. They have smartphones, but they don't understand English well. They don't advance or, uh, understand our advanced interfaces. So we created an app called Dukan, dukan.pk, which we just launched. And there've been about a thousand stores who already have installed it. It's an e-commerce site, essentially. In Urdu, you can upload your inventory, snap images of them, and anybody can see your site, which is instantly created, and you can order and pay online. We've integrated all the gateways. It takes them five minutes. And on the back of this, on the back of their sales, we're giving them loans directly in the app. So this is basically a digital loan that we're giving them on the basis of their cash flows, and it helps them sell more because our loan is at a 2% markup, uh, and they spin the money I give them four times. So essentially, they make 40% on the amount of funds we give them. So it's been an incredibly interesting time, a fun time, but now really going down deep into the bottom of the pyramid because now there are 85 million smartphone enabled internet users uh, out of 110 million adults. It's a significant portion now, but the majority of them are using interactive apps on their phone for the first time. They use Facebook, they use WhatsApp and they use voice. So when we build things for them, if we don't build that interface right, like we would for essentially a two-year-old who can now go to YouTube and watch a video, if we don't do that in the local languages, we're going to exclude them from the knowledge economy. And this is a massive population and they're actually consumers. We think poor people don't buy. Well, the mass, these are the guys who buy the milk and the cheese and you know the biscuits, the cigarettes. So uh, all of that's happening and this is a new enlightenment and awareness post-COVID uh, smartphone uh, sales have gone up because people needed interactive phones in order to do things in the lockdown where we weren't able to move around. E-commerce is booming now in Pakistan. It was already growing. It's growing a lot faster now. So uh, 
COVID-19 has been a shot in the arm for a digital ecosystem where it's created a need and a, you know, an awareness of the need from the top to bottom. So all segments and verticals are now gravitating towards having a presence online, being able to sell online, reach your clients online, reach you online, um, and just amazing opportunities in this country now when you start to get that kind of usage and those many people who are you know, interacting. Phenomenal, Manas. Wow, this is great. I mean, this is like getting a, a Cliff Notes version of what's actually happening in the ecosystem and really good to hear what's happening. So just, you know, digging in a little further. So what is your view on the, ne on the near term? What, what do you see ha happening over the next 18 to 24 months? So look, what's, what's happening now is, um, and I'll tell you this because I'm perhaps, uh, you know, a landmark now in the internet ecosystem. I was the first one crazy enough to come back and create a venture online. You know, I moved back in 2003 where there were about a million and a half internet users in the country, mainly broadband. Right. connect from their offices, right? From those right. days. So the traffic would actually go to zero on the weekends because everybody was home and the traffic would spike in the workplace. And Rosie launched, my jobs platform launched on that. So people would be hunting from jobs while at work because they had internet. Of course, that's changed. Now the majority of our traffic has moved to smartphones. Right. And the number of internet users now, smartphone enabled, I mentioned 85 million people. So you can just imagine what's going on from the usage and ecosystem, the bandwidth, all of that is growing payment ecosystem has just flourished. They're branchless wallets. Now I think Pakistan is more advanced than the U S when it comes to mobile payments. Right. And that's a fact because we're leapfrogging. We've learned from the experience overseas in China, specifically state bank is on the bandwagon and they're making policies that allow small startups like myself play in this ecosystem, which wasn't previously allowed. My other startup, which is called Finja. It's a lending startup. Uh, and smartphone based off of a wallet. Finja um, was the first company recently in Pakistan for state bank to grant an EMI, a license for an EMI license, which means that we can essentially operate as a bank independent of banks and take a deposit through a mobile wallet and create accounts through them. And once we create these accounts based on the data, we score them and we can give loans to SMEs, which we've done about 5,000 small shops we've handed loans to based on their cash flows and uh, about uh, 3,000 salaried individuals. Uh, we process the salaries for about 50,000 people through our uh, through a payments platform for organizations. And when they pay their employees, we give them cash advances based on how much money they've already earned. So we're doing salary loans at scale now, very safe, these two loans. But it's the first time in the country that this segment, both consumers as well as SMEs are able to get loans at scale. Very tough to do in Pakistan. Banks aren't playing ball. They're very inefficient. All of the bank, all of the banks give their money to the government where they make easy cash. Sure. And they don't have to do a lot of work. So there's a big transition going on, but 18 months you're saying what's happening. Well, look, during this lockdown, five new international VC funds have entered into the market in Pakistan, investing in startups like a Tajir and a Bazaar and a Baikia and like our startup, all right. you know, Finja side, we're close to closing another investment round. It'll be the third round we're closing on Finja. So what I'm telling you is when I raised funding for Rosie uh, in, uh, what was it, 2007, 2008, it's the first mm -hmm. time in the history of the country where foreign VC actually came in. And we had uh, DFJ, uh, which is a fund that um, launched Hotmail and Skype, along with ePlanet, they used to be one fund. They came in for the first time into the country and since then, we've raised a few more rounds on the rosy side. We have some amazing investors. Um, we've raised uh, some investment on the Finja side and a few other startups I'm involved in have been raising money. So if you look at the exponential curve of, and it looks exponential because the scale is small, but the number of funds entering into the country is growing rapidly. It's far easier closing a round for a credible startup, a good team, a good idea, a big space, uh, than it was when I launched. It's, it's an order of magnitude easier. And I'm talking to funds right now for the other startups we're doing. And these are very well-known funds who invested in India, who invested in Vietnam, in you know, Philippines, and Pakistan is the market. 220 million people, 85 million smartphone users. The wallet space, the payment space is on fire in Pakistan. The Easy Pass at JazzCash, SimSim, Finja Wallet, and a bunch of new EMIs are doing this, it's become easier and easier to pay. You can now pay all of your, your phone bills, your electric bills, your water bills. You can actually pay for toll bills 
now on your phone and these use cases are rapidly increasing. Pakistan is an amazing place, ground zero, where most of the verticals are still open. There are players in them, but not big leaders. So this is a time to come and grab a vertical and become big. And we know which verticals are going to be successful because we're late you know, in this game. So we can look at India and Vietnam and the US and you, and you can extrapolate which are the verticals that are very lucrative that aren't exploited in Pakistan. And that's what VCs are doing. And they're entering on the back of uh, smart entrepreneurs, a lot of whom are moving back. But the other thing in the next 18 months you're saying is the quality and quantity of entrepreneurs available in the market to start ventures has also increased. And it's increased because there have been uh, players like Rocket Internet, which originally launched the Raz. They've been Kareem and Uber. And as they enter into the market and hire people and train them on very KPI based uh, growth hacking and, um, you know, ensuring the efficiency needed for online, learning the business. These people graduate from those institutes and they become entrepreneur. And that's exactly what you're seeing. A lot of the new startups are actually alumni from organizations that started in Pakistan. They learned the ropes and they were smart. And now they're going and starting this. In my case, I've been doing this forever. So I've graduated a few times over and you get a superpower. Everybody who does startups knows this as an entrepreneur, as you start to do more of these and more spaces, you know more people, you know more of the infrastructure, how to do things, you evolve into a superpower so you can do things faster. So that's what's going on. I think Pakistan right now is a Disneyland for entrepreneurs. And this is a secret, which is keeping the valuations low, but it allows us to get more space where we can execute and grow businesses instead of being um, you know, kind of undermined earlier on by international brands that are you know, slower to enter. Awesome. Well, Manas, thank you. And as you know, in tech check format, we're coming to the end of our time today. Uh, for our audience out there, you heard it from the, the man who's been in the trenches for the last 17 years himself. Lots of opportunity, lots of capability. So to our diaspora brethren, take a strong look at what's going on in country. And as far as the Disneyland statement from Manas's perspective, hey, things are tough out there. This is the guy who knows how to go up and down Magic Mountain a few times. But you know what? You're never going to know what it's like until you don't get on the ride. And with that, I want to thank you for joining us today, Monas. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and an honor. And to our audience out there, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to all of our social media handles. Like and follow us. That's what keeps this train going. And with that, I bid everybody Allah Hafiz. Thank you very much.